Hey guys, um, welcome to Humans of Cultura, a series showcasing some of the awesome goals people are working on with Cultura. And for the first episode, I have my friend Max here, who's helping small entrepreneurs succeed. Howdy, nice to have you. It's awesome to be on the show. Thank you. Yeah, welcome, Max. Um, so, what is like the main overarching goal that you're working on, and what's like, yeah. the stuff you're doing to get there? Totally. I think like right now I have two goals um, and they're both pretty long term, but I think the first one, so I'm building two things right now. The first is I'm building a, um, a company in Pittsburgh called Moss Generation um, to, to help centralize the, the entrepreneurial community, like the investable startup community very specifically. Yeah. Um, and there, there's a lot of like startups in town, like small businesses, early businesses, but that's not like... Uh, just because like you're you're an early consulting company doesn't mean like you're a startup right like, like investability and and those kinds of like high growth hockey stick uh, growth kind of startups are uh, usually dealing with the same problems they're usually dealing with the same issues and it's a very very decentralized ecosystem here so trying to bring everybody together with that um, and because we'll have be the center point of that kind of community if an investor the hope is that what I'm working on right now the hope is, is that like if a New York investor reaches out or wants to get into Pittsburgh and invest in some of the companies here, we can be that outlet. We can be their boots on the ground and we might be able to get paid for that. So right now I'm just trying to get that moving um, and get paid for that kind of work um, to be kind of like a scout for like venture firms. But um, the eventual like the eventual goal with that is to be the like kind of like the tech stars for tier two tech hubs in, in the U.S. So like like in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, a, like a, um, like a, a Detroit, like a, um, like anywhere outside of Austin, Texas, New York, um, Bay Boston, Area. Bay Area, Seattle, the, the, those bigger, more yeah, notable tech hubs. That makes sense because there's not a lot of like resources. There's not a lot of communities around them, and they're exactly. like college towns, basically, like Ann Arbor, um, that have a lot of talent and startups. Exactly. They have a lot of talent. They have a lot of startups. There's usually a pretty heavy focus on tech, like especially in Pittsburgh, we have Carnegie Mellon University and there's a massive focus on technology here, um, but it's just not accessible. And so we're trying to become the access point for investors outside of those little ecosystems. Um, the second thing I'm working on is a kind of trying to build a community online uh, via a content channel I have called Entrepreneur. Um, it's very dorky, very silly, but basically, <laughs> um, it's, it's, uh, I did it on LinkedIn. I have like 5,500 followers on LinkedIn awesome. and, uh, I do live streaming on Twitch and LinkedIn is eventually supposed to give me access to their live feature. They have not yet. I'm extremely yeah. salty about it. All my friends are going right? <laughs> to, but, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'll eventually stream to, to LinkedIn until YouTube and a bunch of other platforms soon, but right now Twitch. And uh, I do like three hour live streams every week mm -hmm. where I try to build a business live and I'll, I'll just like come up with an idea on one stream on the next stream. Like after doing market research and customer interviews, I'll talk about all that and like the problems that I found in the industry and then I'll slap together some, some tiny little product and see if I can sell it. Yeah. That's, that's the idea. And I, I hope to eventually build a community of other people doing that um, to teach uh, like just from what I've seen, like that form of entrepreneurship, like the realistic small form, you're not focused on doing some crazy startup. You're not in tech crunch. You're not like, you're not Gary V. Um, just like you're, you're trying to build something small right now, maybe scale it later, but it's just like a miniature form of building a product and selling it. Um, yeah. There's like one resource that I've seen out there for that. It's like a little blog site. I can't remember what it's called. It's Oh, Indie Hackers. Indie Hackers. Right, Indie Hackers yeah. yeah, and I've, I've seen a ton about it here. I need to be more active on the site, mm -hmm. but that's like the only thing that I have seen, and that's a pretty small little uh, ecosystem of a group. Yeah. It's, so, right now, people, when they're building startups, they're just trying to like, focusing on raising money. <laughs> they're trying to like, find investors, whereas like, the focus should be like, finding real problems and exactly. you know, I really like the um, I watched some of your streams like the doing part of it rather than just like showing and like that. exactly yeah there needs to be uh, like entrepreneurial education sucks in that way because they're, like it should be done through examples that's how I learned everything that I know mm -hmm. I talked to people that were doing cool things and they told me the exact process that they went through like here's how I found the problem these are the customers that I talked to these are the questions that I asked this is how I built the product this is how I sold it like it's like just like little tidbits on each of those little pieces mm -hmm. of the process is what got me to understanding how to actually go and start something yeah. and I'm not like unbelievably successful but the goal <laughs> is like that I'm like learning as much as you are while I'm doing it I just I just know a couple of cool tools that we can do to, to get it done faster but yeah. i think 
that's what's missing in entrepreneurial education. Hopefully I can build a community around that, but that's long term. Super cool. Yeah. Kind of like taking a step back, like all your your work or your goals are focused on like entrepreneurship, focused on building startups. Like what got you into this space in the first place? Like why are you so into this? <laughs> yeah, totally. That's a good question. Um it's I feel like I mostly ended up like uh, my dad was always interested in entrepreneurship. And my dad is actually, he's a founder of a startup out in, out in Seattle. And it's mm-hmm. like this, uh, they recently merged with another company that were bought by another. Like he's, he's doing super, super well. It's like a, like a, like a multi, multi million dollar startup. And he's kicking ass. Mm-hmm. Um, he was like, before he was doing any of that, um, I, he was always really interested in the concept of entrepreneurship. He was more interested in the kind of like the, 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 the hype factor around a lot of it. So it, it's really exciting. It's really exciting to be like, what if you exit like a billion dollar startup? Oh my God, you would be like so wealthy, like, like all these different things. And he wants me to be successful is the point. And that's the path that he saw to like the most possible success. So he was interested in pushing me into that. Um, I didn't really learn Jack in my first two years of college. Like, like honestly, like I was just doing basic business courses. Uh-huh. There was no, um, Carnegie Mellon is a great entrepreneurship program. They're awesome. It's, it's, it taught me a lot, mm-hmm. but, um, I ended up learning 95% of what I know outside of school Thanks, because guys. at the end of my sophomore year, I hadn't taken any entrepreneurship courses yet. And I was like, you know what? I should be learning something if I'm calling myself like an entrepreneurship major. Um, or at least that's the focus of my, of my, uh, um, my degree. Mm -hmm. So I went out and I emailed like a couple of CEOs locally and I sat down with them with a little red book. I wish I had, (laughs) you've seen my little red book. Um, and, uh, I just, I interviewed them. I'm like, what the heck? I don't know anything. Please tell me everything. Um, and I, have, I caught a networking bug and I ran around town talking with everybody that I possibly could, just learning like w- how it works, what happens, like well, how did you get into your space, how did you know your idea was a good idea, and I slowly eventually learned how it functions and I got obsessed with that for just, I feel like because of the people, just because I really, really like the people that I was interviewing, I got a lot of friends through that ecosystem, and it's just, I, I like the... Like there is a hype factor behind it, right? Like it's fun and it's creative and it's really, really free form. Um, so it gives me a lot of opportunity to experiment and screw around and just, and just kind of like one day be working on something and the next day be working on something else. So. No, that's awesome. I think it's super cool how like you took it upon yourself to like go look for opportunities and to go look for things. It's like, yeah, school is not <laughs> a great place for like, here's how you build this. Here's how you find problems or, especially entrepreneurship, it's so free form, as you explained, it's like, you have to go out there and do it, you have to go out there and talk to people. Um, yeah, so yeah. like, kind of like, in the early stages, just like, what are like, some of like, the issues that you're having, like, it's like, these CEOs aren't responding, or like, I need to like, reach out to them, like, how did you like, start work getting into that? Because I feel like, a lot of people, when they have things they want to do, um, it's really hard, that first step is really hard. Yeah, I agree. So I think like the main thing that I contributed to is like fun. And I I try to like encourage this in a lot of other people. Like if you, the best way to like get something started, like the only reason that I got started is because like after my first couple of, I was terrified sitting in my first interview. I was like, I, you, you run a company. Like I'm just a little student. Like why why would you? And it was just like, they were just a normal person. They're like, Hey, what's up? Like, Hey, nice to meet you. Like it was super, super casual, but like I was super, super scared for the first. And there was plenty of like things pushing me away from this, like, because it was really uncomfortable. But like after the first one, I was really, really intrigued by like, it was something that honestly, it was something that I could brag about. It was something that I could say like, Hey, I, I, I've interviewed like five CEOs this week and I'm learning a ton of cool things. So that felt cool to me to be able to say internally and to other people, like it, it made me feel like I was doing something right. That was part of the fun. The second part of the fun was like, I, I felt like I was getting somewhere. I felt like I was getting education independently. I felt independent. I felt like I was, I was moving in a solid yeah. direction. Um, and it just intrinsically, that was a really, really powerful motivator because like, like there's nothing more like motivating than success in my opinion. Like if you, it, like the only reason that I got into LinkedIn was because after I posted my cup, first couple of videos, I got like a few thousand views mm-hmm. and I was like, holy frick, like that's, <laughs> that's ridiculous. Like why were people watching my videos? And it was because yeah. the algorithm was really, really nice to new people that were, that were posting content. Um, so because of that, like that kind of that success in that field, like, and, and, and trying something out and having it work, that was what was fun. That's exciting. That's interesting. And that's what kept me going. Um, after a certain point, 
that doesn't like apply anymore and that might not apply to a certain goals that you want to achieve that aren't fun like, for instance i'm personally really struggling with with getting fit right now because i really want to i think it'd be a really really awesome piece of my my life i would feel really proud of yeah. myself there's a lot of intrinsic motivation there but it's just not fun for me it's so exhausting and it's so tiring and it's so hard to get myself up to to do a couple of push-ups so um like that's a different thing that's a goal that i want to achieve but i can't because it's not like my, the intrinsic motivation that I normally rely on isn't there. Um, no, so that's, that's really interesting. Yeah. That's a pretty similar pattern I hear from a lot of other people. It's like, there's just something that they're working on that they der far, derive all this reward from, they find all this motivation. In. And I think, I think it's just like passion, like just like the natural passion people have about things. Um, so it's yeah. super cool. Yeah. Um, so kind of like, you were building, um, talking to all these CEOs, building this network. Um, and like, what, what like brought you to the point? It's like, I need to build a community around this or like, like Moss Gen is a community of startups in Pittsburgh. Entrepreneur is a community of entrepreneurship minded people on LinkedIn. Um, like why, why are you building communities? Like, what are you so into this? Yeah. Like, like I said, like, first of all, the people, the things that like gets me motivated and the things that gets me into stuff is like people. Like I, I love the people I love hearing. I love talking to them like that. That's, that's, that's one of my, like, or what I feel like the skill that I've put the most effort into like talking and, and, and learning about people and, and building relationships. Like I'm not great at coding. I, I very much like most of my stuff revolves around soft skills, which like I'm hitting walls because of that. But it's like, that's, that's what I enjoy. That's, that's what I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm the best at. Um, so like, it's definitely like the people motivate me. So of course the natural progression of that is like building networks, building connections, building Rolodexes, building, um, these, uh, these communities, like you're saying. And so it's, it's just, it's, I also sort of kind of happened into both of them. It's not like I thought to myself, like, I love people. So the natural progression of that is to, is to go into businesses that involve lots of people. Like, it wasn't that that necessarily happened. Um, the reason I got into Moss Gen was because my partner, Andy, was building the community. It was really small when he was building it. But he was like, hey, you're running events in town. I need some help with this because I'm also running my startup full time. So I would love it if you if you help me out. And I've been, uh, lately, I've been the one more carrying this uh, Moss Gen on my shoulders. And I've been running it for the most part because he's building his own startup again. Um, and then with entrepreneurs, like I just was looking for tons and tons. I was, I was working on like, like seven different projects at the time. It was, it was like during my junior year and I was just fascinated with like, there's so many things that I can do. There's so many opportunities. I should try everything out. And I was trying everything out and therefore I was getting nothing done because I was, I wasn't prioritizing, but it gave me the opportunity to try a lot of things. I had immediate success with LinkedIn because I was decent on video and there weren't really any other people on video on LinkedIn. So because I had that success I ha and I got the, the, the attention and the viewership, I like latched onto that really quickly because it was fun. It was interesting. And so I feel like it's, I, I ended up leaning into things that I wanted to teach. I feel like my progression of content definitely has to do with the, like the, the vibe of like, I love entrepreneurship. I want to talk about it all the time. And I want to build a community of other people that do that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it, I feel like, people don't really design how they get into things, especially in the entrepreneurship field. You just go where success takes you. Yeah. Like if you have something that works, you go with it. No, I feel like that's, that's a really common pattern or that I see a lot, especially in entrepreneurship is like people have to try out like different things. They just don't know until like something picks up, something gets something people, other people excited. And that's what you work on. Um, exactly. because it's not just about like what you want to do. It's about like, is it actually valuable to other people? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, not just, I think it's really interesting to see the parallels and content. I know in like, like even on the technical side, like, like building apps or building web apps, I know people who like build like 10 or 20 until like something catches on, um, yep. that people actually use and that's what they go into. So it's pretty cool how content and product are, um, pretty similar. Yeah, um, it's it's a it's a form of a product. I would say it's just yeah. it's not as nearly as grueling as it is to build like an actual product. <laughs> it's a little easier to just type words. Well, you have to add a video, so <laughs> <laughs> it's a little harder. Yeah. There you go. But yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So community is something that you really worked hard to build, and you talk about a lot of the stuff that you a lot of the work you needed just like kind of fell into the place for you. Like just like this needed to be get done that needed to get done. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm sure like this is all a ton of work <laughs> like, to organize. Like, yeah, what like ways did you think about it? Or like, 
did you plan anything? Um, I think like the biggest issue that I've run into in terms of like my community stuff, like first of all, on LinkedIn, like consistency is, is the is the biggest problem for me. Like it's in order to build an audience, in order to keep like things moving, in order to 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 keep people's attention, especially on social media, because everybody like it's people's attention spans on social media are super super small. Yeah. So in order to build any sort of a community on there, I have to be consistent. I have to be showing up every day or as many times as I possibly can. You can really never be posting enough. So um, that is that has been my my main issue, right? Um, so I just I need to like yes, it's fun, but like keeping consistent on that level, like posting something every day, like making a video every day, or, or whatever it may be, that has become really really hard for me. Um, and it's uh, I don't know, like I I feel like I need tools and I need structure and I need like like um, like an apparatus to, to get that done. And I feel like culture has really helped me with that because of the repeatability of what, like of how the, the tool functions. Right. So every day I need to get something done or every day I need to leave, like at least I can schedule it ahead of time, but I still need to remember to post. I need to remember to engage. And it's, it, it's a little bit more of a repeatable task, but it's still very free form. So I feel like when it comes to like things that need to be done every day towards an overarching goal, like for instance, fitness, like I, like I, I struggle with that. That is, practice like work out every day or work out every other day yeah. it's not like a, a very like defined like individual task that i have to get done it's not like a like a like oh i, I build this email campaign and then i market it to people and then i and then i like you know and then i run like a b test different ads like there's there's a, like a progression to like a typical business um uh task or a job or, or or some of my freelance work but it doesn't work that way when it comes to my personal goals it's usually just like yeah. something simple that's pretty like uh, free form. It doesn't really have too much of a structure to it, but you need to be doing that thing and practicing that or, or, or putting some dedication into that every single day. Otherwise you're not going to reach that goal. Yeah, and I feel no. like culture really helps with that. That is something that like I've heard from a lot of other people who are using culture or working on personal goals. Like that was mm -hmm. the large difference I saw between business goals and personal goals is that like business goals are very one-off. They're very, I need to schedule a meeting with this person. Um, whereas personal goals just I need to get the time in and I think that pattern that you described is pretty common for a lot of people who use culture it's not like even for working out it's not I need to do these specific exercises it's just like a repeating task that I need to go to the gym or like I need to like a workout exactly. and it's pretty cool that to see how that also goes into content for you and like just like I need to do something I need to engage I need to post and it doesn't have to be very specific it's just like that reminder to always keep going that I think is like a lot of people have like to help in consistency. Yeah, I agree. It's a big issue. Um, and then with my, my Moss generation stuff, I feel like that's a little bit more free form, but there's a lot of pressure, right? Cause I'm, I have a group and people expect to have events every month and, and, and that kind of like internal pressure, like definitely pushes me to, 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 to keep like pushing things out to, to keep making progress and plus like money is also a good motivator I would love to do Moss Generation full time at some point um, and there is potential for that and that would be way more fun than anything that I'm working on right now ever and I would love to I would absolutely love to do that so it's, it's less money it's more like stability like if I can get the stability on this business and I can I can work on that full time that means I can dedicate all my time to building that business and that's yeah. like what I want to do because it's so so fun to me no that's um, it's really interesting especially like when you're working on these like parallel tracks or these parallel goals it's like how do you split your time like you only have 24 hours in a day yeah um, how do you split your time between like what you're working on and how you dedicate it on? Yeah, it's, it's really, I don't know. Like, it's really weird. Yeah. It's a good question because I, I still haven't figured it out yet. Like I do freelance exclusively because like if I had a job, I would hate it because I hate that structure and how much time that takes up in each little piece of my day. Right. I need to be able to like, like do Jack until like, like 4 PM and then like sit up and plug away until like, like 3 AM, just working on something, working on yeah. like my business, working on my, my, my marketing and like my freelance stuff, whatever it is, I need that lack of structure because I, I like to have a very like whatever kind of day, because that's, that's that feels like how I function right that's now. That's like such a student life. It's like, yeah. you know, yeah. it's like that 10 PM to 2 AM chunk of time is like when you're most productive. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's still when I'm most productive. Yeah. yeah. 
Uh, I don't know. I grind in. <laughs> Everybody that I talk to that's successful, though, like, you got to have a schedule. You got to wake up early. And I'm uh-huh. like, I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, I can't, I can't latch on to that right now. Uh, maybe that'll change in the future. Uh-huh. Maybe I'll start to get, like, uh, I, my sleep schedule might be a little bit more messy. Like, I, I went to bed at, like, 4.30 a.m. last night. Oh and I woke up at, like, <laughs> 11 today. And that, that felt awesome. Like, I uh-huh. loved that. Um, so it's, it's just, I don't know. It's something I need to figure out for sure, but the the scheduling of things is is definitely really messy. I, I, I of course need like Google Calendar because otherwise I can't remember when everything is happening. Yeah, just because it's so free form. No, I feel like I know a lot of people who are also in your position. They're like working on a bunch of different things, and it's like structure <laughs> is the answer. Like how you're using Google Calendar, it's like even though everything's chaotic and super unstructured, it's still like introducing the bare bones form that like keeps people sane <laughs> exactly yeah the sanity is just the important part because as long as you can as long as i know what i need to do and i like and i like reasonably a lot like somewhat existent time slots to do that i can i can get it done right like i just i need to i need to remember what i'm doing and i need to understand that like these repeatable tasks I, I, like i can't set a task that tells me to to work out every day because i ignore it in my typical workflow i need that separation that mental separation of like these are my personal yeah. things these are important these are my business things these need to get done these are on a time crunch but these need to get like these are important too and these are for you um i can't like schedule that in a trello i can't schedule that in my to-do list because it's because then i'll just check it off i'll be like oh whatever like these are more important these are more time sensitive i need to get these yeah. done i need that separation um of my personal and my 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 private and my uh um my my business goals Mm -hmm. because otherwise i just i i push things to the side i forget about me no i was just about to ask like when you're so busy when you're working on all these different things like how do you carve out personal time like for you as a person max rather than (laughs) like for entrepreneur or for moss gen it's like um that's really cool to see how the separation is helping you yeah, yeah, it's I don't know, like carving out time for myself is a little weird. Just because like I enjoy this stuff so much, yeah. that's why I spend all my time on it. Like it's become very, very much a piece of me, and people know me. Like most people that like I have like fifty five hundred followers on LinkedIn. Like that's like my friends personally are more important, of course, than that. But like like the most social interaction that I get is from feedback on my Moschin group or from like, I'll I'll go to this group and I'll have to socialize with every single person that's there because that's my job, right? Like that's, that's the purpose of the event. Like I want to check up on everybody, like what they're doing and see if I can get introductions or help them with anything. And so like when I'm doing those events, when I'm doing my content, like I am the, I have to be like the, the, the center of attention there. And so that's where I get most of my social interaction. So it's, that becomes like a very significant piece even of my social life, right? Yeah. Um, which could be healthy, could not, <laughs> don't know. It, it doesn't like harm me in any way. It's just, it's just the nature of the, the beast of building communities. Yeah. So, um, but it's definitely tough to, it's tough to carve out personal time. No, and that's I why think... I need it free form because if I feel like <laughs> crap, I feel crappy. Let's uh-huh. go do something fun, right? And I yeah. have that flexibility. I need that's that. Cool. I think, um, I know for you, it's like your passions are super aligned with your goals. So it's easy to just be like zoned in because that's what you're passionate about. But yeah, I think it's, I think freeform is a great thing that you're doing to like as a solution or as Mm -hmm. like something to like be able to still be max (laughs) as a person. For sure. Yeah. Um, But it's it's not all there because there is still a separation and I ignore a lot of my my personal little Mm -hmm. goals. Like I, I have so much trouble again, like scheduling time to freaking work out or anything like that. I, I, it's, it's so bad um, because it's so easy to push to the side in comparison to the time sensitive goals of my business, which is what I spent most of my life on. Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. That's a definitely similar problem that here from like a ton of my friends, a ton of like people who are working, they're just like busy and focused on their work itself. Um, Yeah. Cool. So I think we talked about a little bit about like the separation about repeating tasks, but how is like culture different from like to do is and calendar and all that for you? Yeah, I think like I think the main thing is is definitely like the separation. Like it's yeah. it, it's it's the brand of the of the tool, right? Like, and that's that's significantly important. Like the the functionality isn't like like wildly different. Like yeah. it's not like it's not like revolutionary in terms of like workflow tools, right? Um, and it, it may be in the future, like you may progress towards something that's like truly never been done in terms of like yeah. workflow, in terms of productivity. Um, but it's 
um, it's not like it's it's a complete 180 from from stuff that's out there. Like Trello inspired you too, and you you even put on the website. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's still there, but like uh, the Trello for your personal for goals. Like yeah. exactly, yeah, Trello for humans. Um, but uh, so it's not necessarily that the functionality is unbelievably different, but it's just like having that separation, like having it a completely different, mm -hmm. like 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 place with a different mindset around the goals, with a with a different purpose. That like separation right now is, is the main piece because it, I need to have things in different places because that's like I, yeah. because different my I approach different problems with different mindsets. I approach my personal problems with a different mindset. And I approach my, my my business problems with a different mindset. The business is just like let's get it done. This is this is what I need to do. Come on, hustle, hustle, put on some cool lo fi music and just like plug away and let's get it done. Um but with my personal goals like I, I need to feel like like happy i need to feel motivated i need to feel yeah. like 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 and, and like uh, like like this is a, a thing that i need to do and it's gonna benefit me and it's hard to see the the progress now but it's mm -hmm. it's possible and, and i know i've made progress <laughs> since day one you know like it's um and plus like i feel like the language that you use on the website is very very important to that because that language as i'm going through the workflow tool like it it gets me into the right mindset to approach these goals right that is a very very undervalued piece of different workflow tools no um 100 percent. i think what you described it's pretty cool to see how like the vision i have or what i want culture to be is like translated to you um, awesome. your language it's like having a person next to you having someone to talk to about your goals having something one to work on the goals with and yeah i think the separation is pretty cool for the mindset part um because i don't see culture as like a productivity tool i see it as like a tool to help people work on their personal goals. Absolutely, um, I agree. So yeah. even though the implementation, it bar borrows cars, it borrows a Kanban board, um, but it's like, just like that focus on like an entirely different thing, I think is um, what is a foundation of culture. And it's awesome yeah. to hear that like you're using it and it's helping you, so. Yeah, absolutely, no, it's yeah. super awesome. Um, I, I think like, that part of the the little entrepreneurial process like when you start so, to make something and people start to use it and people start to like show appreciation for this <laughs> thing that you made it's it's so so fun i've only done it on a really really small scales no, you're building more of like a, a huge scale so <laughs> I, well I, I mean like like content is different like content is different just because it's it's a new little piece of content like it's a new little product every time right and, it, and the life cycle of that of that product that little post is like two days right it, it, that's that's different from from um like like a product like you're building i built like a newsletter where i help people find internships and that was like my first little project i think you remember that yeah. um that was really great the people like showing appreciation for that was super super fun just because like that had like an actual life cycle and like real benefit like i was helping people mm -hmm. that's super super cool and I'm, I'm trying to build other products right now it's just it's it's a really really fun part of the thing so i'm, I'm glad <laughs> yeah. that i'm glad that people are, are giving positive feedback i think it's so so cool what you're building no i think it's it's awesome even for your newsletter i think um like that's what like entrepreneurship should be about i guess it's just like helping people at like the most basic level it's like yeah it's there's hype and there's all this stuff about it but it's just like can you solve problems for people and i think um, exactly i think that's, that's awesome you're part. teaching it through entrepreneur and you're building it out through moss gen and yeah, yeah. that's the hope yeah i'm glad you like it and so <laughs> oh i just want to keep pushing along with it but yeah awesome yeah. i appreciate cool. it let's wrap this up thank you so awesome. much max for helping yeah. on it's awesome talking about goals entrepreneurship and everything you're working on so yeah. thanks for coming on absolutely thank you for having me on it was a pleasure yeah <laughs> cool bye bye